my name is Katia and today I'd like to walk you through my process of styling bright colors. I know that super saturated bright colors can be a little bit intimidating to work with, especially if you're used to wearing more neutral toned or all black outfits, but I personally cannot for the life of me stick to one color family. So if you'd like to find out how to incorporate more vibrant shades into your personal style, then stick around. This video is sponsored by Los Angeles Apparel, so I will be using some of their wonderful basic pieces to show you how I go about styling these colors. And if you'd like to shop any of the pieces mentioned in this video, there will be a link in the description to browse their store. But before we get into the actual outfits, I do want to get you up to speed on color theory, which does play quite the role in color blocking. Essentially, all the colors we can see are on this wheel right here, and they're made by mixing red, blue, and yellow, which are the primary colors. These colors cannot be created by mixing any other colors together. They just simply are. Green, orange, and purple are secondary colors, which means they are made by mixing two primary colors together. And tertiary colors are made by blending two secondary colors together, so turquoise, chartreuse, violet, and etc. We can refer to the color wheel to see which colors go together best. As I'm sure you can imagine, there are lots of different color combinations and types of color combinations, but the ones I tend to use in my styling are as follows. Complementary colors, which are colors that are opposite from each other on the color wheel. The complements are red and green, blue and orange, and purple and yellow. These essentially highlight one another the best. Analogous colors are groups of three colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. For example, blue, blue, green, and green, and red, red, violet, and violet. And then we have triadic colors, which are groups of three colors spaced evenly on the wheel. So this is gonna be your red, blue, and yellow, or orange, green, and purple combination. The color wheel also takes into consideration how bright or dark colors are and how saturated they are. So we call pure colors hues. When we add white to hues, they become tints or pastels. When we add gray, they become tones or neutrals. And when we add blacks to hues, we call those shades. Essentially, hues are at peak saturation level and shades are at the least. When I decide I wanna wear a colorful outfit, I'll generally pick one hue and then use color theory to slowly build the rest of my outfit around it. So that's what I chose to do in this first look where I styled the red Los Angeles apparel tennis skirt with their yellow cotton spandex turtleneck. Because these colors are two of the primaries, I knew that blue would fit in wonderfully into this outfit, so I added these white sneakers with red and blue detailing. Adding color coordinated socks is a great way to make the outfit look more cohesive, so that's why I went with these yellow ones to match the turtleneck. This is your classic primary color combo. Red, blue, and yellow always look great together, especially when they're all at a similar saturation level. This color combination can also be flipped by wearing a yellow tennis skirt and a red turtleneck because the colors will balance each other out regardless. I tied in all three colors using a plaid printed bow. This is a striking element because it's the only printed item juxtaposed with all solid colors, and it's not overbearing because it stays within the color scheme. If this look is a little bit too bright for your taste, then switching out the red red tennis skirt for the white variation can be another great way to emphasize the statement color, which in this case is the yellow of the turtleneck. Adding white accessories in general is a hack for putting a fire outfit together, so that's exactly what I did with these white go-go boots. By adding this pastel yellow corduroy jacket on top and holding this matching mini bag, we can strive for a monochromatic color combo where we utilize multiple variations of the same color. I also went for these yellow butterfly clips because they match the shade of the turtleneck. So now we have two items in each shade we chose to style, which makes the look more cohesive to the eye. The variance in saturation levels of the yellows works here because it's still all the same color. If you need to wear a mask, choosing one that's in a shade that's already in the outfit is going to make your outfit look even more put together. The skirt can also be substituted for some jeans for another simple punchy look, or more complementary colors can be added using accessories such as sunglasses. For this next look, I chose to style the Los Angeles Apparel Heavy Rib Spaghetti Mini Dress in an analogous color scheme using this purple turtleneck and matching tights. The silhouette of the dress reminds me of the 60s, so the boots fit in here as well. Because the turtleneck and tights are in the same shade, the dress is more pronounced because it gives the illusion of breaking up the two pieces. I also added some matching barrettes to make this colorful look even more punchy. Animators are masters of color theory, so if you feel like a cartoon character in your outfit, you're doing something right. For my e-girls out there, I also wanted to try to style a more grunge-inspired look with this same dress, so I just added a ton of black accessories 
including this corset, headband, mini bag, and some fishnet tights. Adding all black accessories has a similar effect to adding all white ones. It just naturally looks more cohesive because they're all one neutral color. Plus, it helps the statement dress stand out even more than it already does because of the contrast. This dress can be substituted for one in really any bright color. Underneath the dress, I layered this mesh zebra print top, but if that's a bit too much for your taste, it can easily be replaced with a simple black and white striped shirt or even a basic black or white top of your choice. To balance the length of the skirt, I wore some knee-high military boots. The top boots and fishnets give a more traditionally edgy look, while the headband and corset play more into the feminine side, giving an overall balanced appearance. I also wanted to show a more classic slash business casual take, so I styled that same dress with a blazer in the same shade of blue. Going for outerwear in the same exact color as the base of your outfit can create a coordinated matching set effect, even if they are from different stores like mine. Because there was so much blue, I added some statement shoes to break that up. Since the heels are in this metallic fabric, I feel like they take the outfit from a simple matching set to a more elevated polished look. This magenta shade is again in a similar level of saturation to the blue. I went for some silver accessories for this outfit, but gold would work here too. Just because we're going for vivid colors doesn't mean that all our outfits have to be extremely fancy. We can incorporate these tips into more casual styles as well. So here's a monochromatic look I came up with using the Los Angeles Apparel Flex Fleece High Waist Sweatpants in red. I paired them with this combination of a ribbed halter top and a matching mesh long sleeve. I added a bit more red with these barrettes and cherry hoop earrings, and I opted for my trusty Air Force Ones with some rainbow print socks for a bit more of a statement. Because this look felt so sporty and street style inspired to me, I added this gold angel chain which also ties in with the earrings and ring. Any monochromatic look like this that incorporates multiple pieces in the same hue is going to have an impact regardless of the saturation level or fabric. In fact, mixing and matching fabrics in the same hue can create a more interesting textured look than just using one fabric. Now although the color wheel can be a useful tool for figuring out which colors complement each other, it's not the end-all be-all for deciding which pieces you can wear with one another. So for this next look, I styled the lavender garment dye relaxed fit bull denim jean with a purple graphic tee. It has Homer Simpson disappearing into the bushes on it, so it also incorporates these beautiful shades of green, yellow, and blue. Picking out a colorful graphic tee like this one and then choosing the rest of your outfit to match the colors in it is, I think, one of the easiest ways to form an outfit. Much like vivid colors, these pastel pieces create a sort of harmony when worn together and result in an overall softer look. So I played into that with these matching yellow socks, a dainty white bow headband, and some thin purple shades. Since Homer's shirt is white, I opted for some white platform sandals, and I wore a shoelace as a belt because the outfit was giving me Indie Kid, and that is one of their go-tos. If you want to dress like an Indie Kid or you're just curious as to what that is, I do have an entire video explaining the aesthetic in detail, which I will link on the screen and in the description, so make sure you go watch that next. I would also love to hear from you which outfit was your favorite and what colors you like to wear or if you have any suggestions for a video topic you can leave all that in the comment section below if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads thank you so much for watching i will see you next time bye